Okay, so welcome everybody first to this tutorial and second today we're gonna go ahead and see how we can filter out all sorts of market all sorts of characters. For example, uh, people tend to use exclamation marks in their passwords or asterisks or I don't know a symbol for a British pound or I don't know something else whatever they tend to use uh, these symbols within their passwords although not a lot of people tend to do this most people tend to just type in some sort of a name or a word from a dictionary and a few numbers unless the service on the other side is actually forcing them to use lower uppercase uh, characters etc now we need to deal with these things and how, how how shall we deal with them well think of it this way how do you uh, what do you have to press on the keyboard to get an exclamation mark? Depending on what sort of keyboard do you use, uh, I suppose, I, I think this is actually pretty universal, so for an exclamation mark it's shift 1 and then you get an exclamation mark. And we need to make a statement which would recognize the state of the shift key and if the shift key is pressed and if the value is the ASCII value of 1 on the keyboard, then please do not type in 1, rather instead please type in an exclamation mark. So let's go uh, about solving this problem. Now there's going to be quite a good deal of these things and we will... Uh, perhaps an if statement is not the most efficient one here, rather instead we will combine the if and switch statements in order to get a better efficiency. So uh, let's go ahead and type in else, then enter, open up uh, these curly brackets. Let's go ahead and do this, write a switch statement as I've shown you previously. So just the key here, and then we're going to enter, and there we go. So uh, let's deal with these cases one by one. Uh, case. So, just give me a moment. Ah, right, I have the find for the backspace. No, I don't need for the backspace, I need for one. So this case will feature when the value of the key is basically the hexadecimal, the ASCII value of one, and let's take a look at the ASCII table for one. ASCII, ah, I've marvelously misspelled that. ASCII table. So which one is it for one? Uh, for one, it's actually 49. Probably should have begun with zero. Doesn't really matter. We can add it. I just want to show you a demonstration. So it's 49. Or is it? 49 it is. Okay, so case 49 shall be, shall go like this. If uh, we need to create the overrides, so if if uh, get, I forget about this. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste it because I'm terrible at writing these things down. So all we want is the state of the shift key. And what was the hex for shift key? Zero x ten. Okay, so zero x. Uh, the val the hex value is uh, ten, but you just write zero in front of the zero x to symbolize that it is a hexadecimal val that is a hexadecimal number, and you would write them in here, like this. That's this is the hexa value for it anyway. Uh, so if this is so, if this is tr true, I would like you to do this, right? greater greater than sign, open quotation marks, type in an exclamation mark, do this, and then just go ahead and, uh, well, we can either close the file or not here. I'll probably make this a little bit prettier, but for the time being, I just want to do a demonstration of how this works. So, let's press Control F11, do the build. Uh, okay, there's a 
there's one keylogger running in the background. Let's go ahead and end the task. Kill it! No more. Let's run it one more time. Okay, so it is running. Let's go ahead and type in some exclamation marks. Hey there. Open up our log file, and there you go. So it says, tu, 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 tu. okay, this is from my previous things. Okay, so this is the this is the current one. So exclamation, exclamation, exclamation marks. Hey there at the end. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select this file and cleanse it, purify it, so I don't have any more of these distractions. And now, from this point on, we just need to keep on making. Uh, we just need to keep on building on this switch statement. So we're gonna have a lot of cases, and this will allow us to customize our keylogger towards a keyboard that we would like or you know uh, generally so even if somebody has keys configured differently it does affect you but it does not affect you to that extent I mean how many different variations can you have uh, with let's say shift one two at max so you have two possibilities uh, and it has to be one of the two even though somebody has a different keyboard layout perhaps it's not an exclamation mark maybe it's a tilde key or something of a kind that's what I see on my keyboard anyway that's a possibility so just take a look at your keyboards I mean literally just pick it up take a look and see the numbers from from 0 to 1 well actually the way they're laid out in the upper portions of the keyboard it's from 1 to 0 it goes like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then you have a 0 and you take a look at these numbers and then you take a look at these keys these physical keys and see what's drawn on them and look there aren't that many possibilities I see three things that are drawn on each one of them one of those three things is a number and the other one is a standard thing which you would use with shift and the other one is some other symbol that can be used as well that's kind of configured but I rarely anybody uses that they usually use other portions of their keyboard to for those symbols which we are going to deal with here so anyway in the follow-up tutorial I perhaps won't be doing as much talking as I will do the writing out of this long switch statement uh, there are two portions of this switch statement one is for uh, these special characters and well, if you want to call them special characters, and the other one is for our keyboard, is for our keyboard, uh, is for let's say tab, ca uh, tab, and we need to incorporate caps lock somewhere around here as well. And if we want to, what what do we want to be written out when we press Shift? We don't want anything to be written out, or when you press Control or Alt, and so on and so forth. But in any case, uh, this is the approach that I'm going to take. It's not the prettiest of approaches, but it's the one that's the simplest to understand. So, look, we have case checking, which we need to upgrade. We will do that in the follow-up tutorial, most likely, with the caps lock as well. And down here, we have the else statement, which just uh, translates into a switch statement in such a way we have in we have interconnected this entire this entire condition check. And then in the switch statement, we're going to have a good amount of cases which will be custom tuned to deal with particular uh, keys. So to get proper output when you press a certain key. So shift one, we wanted to give an exclamation mark. Shift two, we wanted to give a quotation mark. Shift three, well, I got no idea what shift three is. Okay, so it's a British pound and shift four, it's a dollar sign and shift... Uh, five, it's a percentage sign, a carrot sign, and n percent sign, and so on and so forth. So this is what we shall do in the next tutorial. Anyway, I bid you all farewell, and I hope to see you there.